Hello and welcome to Highlight Incorrect Answers. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked the following question. Jeff, how do I highlight incorrect answers? And I'm gonna answer that question in this short video. Exercise one. One option is to apply conditional formatting manually for each cell. That might look something like this. Conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and temporarily we'll use equal to. And we'll say format cells that are equal to Okay, the correct answer is one, and then we click okay. So if I enter the correct answer, it gets the conditional formatting rule, but this is not what we want. We want to conditionally format incorrect answers. So what we do is we go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, edit, and then we say where the cell value is not equal to, and then click okay and okay. Now, if the student enters the correct answer like one, we're good. If the student enters the incorrect answer like two, then we get the format. And then we would set that up manually for the next cell. As you can imagine though, that's a very tedious approach. Is there a better way? Yes, and we'll take a look at that in the next exercise. Exercise two. The trick is to break the components of the formula down into individual cells. If we look back at exercise one, the entire question was contained within a single cell value. If we look at exercise two, we can see that we've broken up the formula so that the individual components are stored in cells. That makes it much easier to write a conditional formatting rule that is applied to the entire range rather than having to write them one by one. We select this entire range, conditional formatting, and here we're gonna say new rule. And we're gonna use a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're gonna say equals paren is this. Now when I click that, I get absolute cell references. I need this to be a relative cell reference, so I'm gonna delete these dollar signs, times this, and once again, I'm gonna remove the dollar signs. Is that equal to this? And once again, I'm gonna remove the dollar signs. Now this would be a rule for correct answers. If B6 times D6 is equal to F6, then it's gonna get the formatting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that equal sign to less than or greater than. That basically means is not equal to. So if this is the incorrect answer, then I can go to format. I'm gonna to go to fill, more colors, and I'll choose this. And for font, I'll go with this. Click okay and okay, and click okay. Now, if a correct answer is entered, the formatting is removed. If an incorrect answer is entered, then we get the formatting. But we can make two enhancements. First, we can say, if it's a correct answer, let's make it green. And if it's empty, let's just not format it at all. So what we can do is we can select this range and we can add an additional rule. In other words, we can apply multiple conditional formatting rules to a single range. Conditional formatting, new rule. And what we're gonna say is, if it is blank, then apply no format and click okay. And nothing seemed to happen. So let's go back into conditional formatting and let's manage rules. Here we can see that this rule was true, so it applied this format or no format but then it continued to evaluate, and this one happened to be true also. So then it applied the red. So what we can do is say stop if this rule is true and stop evaluating additional rules. So then we just click OK. And now we can see if no answer was given, there is no format. If a correct answer is given, it's fine. If an incorrect answer is given, then we get this error format, four and five. If we wanted to apply a format for correct answers, no problem. We can select this entire range, go to conditional format, new rule. We're gonna use a formula to determine which cells to format. And once again, we're gonna say equals, if this times this is equal to this. And once again, I need to remove these dollar signs so that they are relative references. And then I'm gonna click format. For the fill, I'll go with this. And for the font, I'll go with this. Click OK and OK. Now, as the student goes through, if they enter a correct answer, they get green. And if they enter an incorrect answer, they get red. Two, three, let's say five. Oops, four, okay, got it. Five, 
let's say three, oops, and got it, and you get the idea. But what if I want to do more than just multiplication? Well, that leads us to the next exercise, exercise three. So once again, we begin by selecting the range and going to conditional formatting, new rule. Once again, we're gonna use a formula to determine which cells to format. In this case, we're gonna use the switch function. And the switch function allows us to inspect a cell. We're gonna look at this one, but I'm gonna remove the dollar signs. And then we just basically go, if that is an X, which is what we're using for the multiplication operator, then we want to go with this times this, comma. Otherwise, if it is a plus, then we're going to use the addition operator. So we're basically going to say this plus this, comma. If it's a dash, that's the subtraction operator, so we're going to go with this minus this. And if it's a slash, it's the division operator, so we're going to go with this divided by this. And we have to make sure that that does not equal this. And then we're going to go with format fill, we'll pick this, pick anything you want by the way, for font, we will go with this. Click OK and OK. Now, if the answer is correct, like one times one, we get no formatting. If the answer is incorrect, then we get the red formatting. And here two plus two is four, two times four is eight, and you get the idea. And just like we did before, we could also add additional formatting rules, including for empty cells or for correct answers. We would just use the same technique that we did here, which is with the switch function. So that's how we can use conditional formatting to highlight incorrect answers. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.